Hello, Chris Groff here from Kruger School of Applied Technologies in San Antonio, Texas. Today we're going to be using Blender uh, 2.62. It's actually in the 2.6 version. Uh, we're going to be using the Dynamic Paint feature and using the Waves feature in it. As you can see here, I've created a little bobber and it goes around and creates waves on this cube that I've scaled. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. You're going to go to File New. Let's start out with a default scene. First thing you want to do is scale the cube. So press S to scale and then Y. And you want to scale it out on the Y. And press S and X and scale it out on the X. And if it covers up the grid, that's good. Okay, and just lower it a little bit. Once you've scaled it, you're going to go into edit mode. So you can press tab or you can go here and select edit mode. And we need to subdivide it. So you're going to press W, like watermelon, and then select subdivide. And you're going to do that six times. And the reason we do that is because the dynamic paint works by using the vertices which are these little points. Okay, the vertices hold the data for the waves. So the more times you subdivide it, the better your waves will look and the slower your computer will run. So six is a good medium for that. Once you have that set up, you're going to go to physics and you're going to select the dynamic paint feature and when we use the dynamic paint feature you have a canvas and you have a brush so the canvas is going to be where the waves form so let's add a canvas and underneath here it says dynamic paint advanced surface type okay so we've used paint before we're gonna be using the surface type waves to create waves and we'll talk about these features later once we put in our paintbrush. Alright, so we're going to add our paintbrush. So it'll be, we're going to go to Add Mesh and UV Sphere. And once you've added that in, if you're not already on it, go to Physics, select Dynamic Paint, select Brush, and then Add Brush. Okay? And when we do that, you can see that as you move the object, it creates a little crevice. Okay. All right, so let's press Alt-A. And when you press Alt-A, you can see the beginnings of the waves forming. Okay. So hit Escape. You want to right-click and select uh, your canvas. And let's go ahead under shading, you can select smooth, and that'll smooth out. If you hit Alt-A, you'll notice that your waves will be a lot smoother. They won't be as pixelated. Okay. You can also do this. Go into edit mode. And under normals, select recalculate. And then go back into object mode, hit Alt-A. And that should also help smooth out your waves. Alright, so with your canvas selected, you want to be on the physics button. And you can let Alt-A, you can let the animation keep ru uh, running. Let's talk about some of the dynamic paint advanced features. Okay, so open border, basically this allows the waves to pass through the mesh edges instead of reflecting from them. So we want to check open borders. Your time scale adjusts your simulation speed. So basically the lower the value, the lower the simulation will go. So if you want um, slower waves, you would make this uh, lower. All right, so let's try it. Let's put it on two. And I'm going to adjust, we're going to do this for 90 frames, so go ahead and adjust the ending frame to 90. 
and if you don't have it animating press alt a okay so I've moved the time scale up to two so you can see that the that the uh, waves are a lot faster right now so I'm gonna set it at 1.5 your speed is how fast the waves travel on the surface so by fault it's at one I'm gonna put it at two and that goes a little too fast I'm gonna leave it I think at one and a half here you can always go back and change these features the damping reduces the wave strength over time so it's set at 0 0.04 I'm gonna change it to 0.1 and then the last one is spring spring adjusts the force that pulls the water back to the zero level where it's still I'm gonna leave that there uh, but obviously you can go through these and set them up however you want let's try time scale let's try it at 0.75 here okay so that gives us like a slower um, animation I'm just trying different things and seeing how it looks and that's basically what you want to do here in part one okay so I like that I'm gonna hit escape uh, basically what we're going to do next let's go ahead and set up our bobber okay so what you want to do is select the UV sphere do shift S and do cursor to selected that way our cursors on that object and then go to add mesh and let's add in a cylinder and then for the cylinder let's make the radius point uh, one and let's make the depth one and go ahead and use that blue arrow to drag it up there we go and if yours came in and you didn't see it here all you have to do is delete this cylinder and just do it again uh, that first screen where you change the properties will only be in there when it first comes up alright so we need to connect this top part to the bottom part so what you want to do is right click select the cylinder first hold shift while this is selected and then right click your cylinder and do control P and we're gonna parent them so select object and now they will be together here alright so while that's set let's go ahead and do the animation we're gonna make it 90 seconds or I'm sorry 90 frames which is three seconds so if your ending frame isn't as at 90 go ahead and set it to 90 alright so let's go let's try every 10 frames so at frame 1 you want to make sure that your bobber's in the water and let's do let's press I for location and then let's go to frame 10 move your bobber down press I and select location and then let's go to frame 15 here and we'll move it up a little and press I and location and if we look at it press alt a you can see that the bobber goes up and it creates waves so now we're just going to animate it kind of going through the water so let's go to frame 20 and let's put it down in this bottom corner here press i and do insert a location keyframe let's go to frame 30 and let's move it to this corner over here and you can also mess with the height of it press I and location and we can go to frame 40 we'll go down to this bottom corner I'll drag the bobber up a little bit so it's a little higher and press I and location 
And basically every 10 frames you want to move it to a different position. It doesn't have to be animated just like mine. Okay, so I'm going to go to frame 60. I'll move it down here. Move it up a little. And press I. And I'll go to 70. I'll move it up to the top. Move it down a little. Press I. Location. And then I'll go to 80. Frame 80. Move it in the middle here. Press I, location. And then frame 90. Move it down a little more. Move the bobber down. And I in location. So I, once I have my keyframes set up, I did them every 10, basically. I can go back to frame 0, hit Alt A and you'll see that it is zipping through the water. Now if you want to slow down the animation, instead of doing every 10 frames, you could do every 20 frames or every 15. The farther the keyframes are apart, the slower the motion. Okay, so this is kind of zipping through, which I kind of like. It's three seconds long. It's a fast little animation. You can see the waves. Okay, so once you have that, if you're in my class, Go ahead and go to File Save As, and you're going to going to you're going to want to go to the 506, and go to your period, your folder, and your Blender folder. And let's go ahead and save this as Wave dot Blend. Okay, and. In part two, we'll be adding materials not only to the water but to our bobber. And we'll set up the light and the camera and get it ready to be rendered. Okay, thank you.